Live on Good Morning Football. Let's say hi to Will Selva. He's out in the newsroom in Culver City this morning with the latest. And uh, then we're going to talk some Cowboys. Mm. Oh, okay. All right. We'll get to that in a second. First, let's go to Minnesota, where Kyle Rudolph's contract status continues to loom over the Vikings and their tight end this offseason. Rudolph has expressed interest in staying while the team would like to accommodate his wish. Rudolph attending OTAs while things are getting worked out. The Vikings offering Rudolph a five-year extension. And according to the St. Paul Pioneer Press, both sides are working through the situation. Rudolph has said he won't take a pay cut. He's set to earn seven and a half million in 2019. Despite the contract impasse, Rudolph is taking it as a. It's not a bad situation to be in. Uh, I get to come out every day and practice with my teammates, and um, you know, a bad situation would have been getting cut back in March. But that's that's the good thing. I get to come out here each and every day and, and practice with my teammates and. Whatever happens, happens. All right, so Rudolph with the perspective there. Meanwhile, Seahawks wants a new deal. And who can blame him when he looks at the contract C.J. Mosley received from the Jets? Mosley will earn $17 million per year. Wagner calls this number the standard, and the plan is to break it. He's representing himself, saying he knows his value. Wagner is at voluntary OTAs but is not participating. Quarterback Dak Prescott taking part in Cowboys OTAs as both sides work on a contract extension. The Cowboys have made an offer to which Dak's side has made a counter offer. Owner Jerry Jones telling NFL Network Insider Ian Rappaport the negotiations are, quote, going well. And Kay and Guy, as you mentioned, Prescott reportedly looking at an extension in the $30 million a year range. Still, you have to try to feed everyone. They still have to take care of Amari and Zeke as well. We'll see who eats and who goes hungry. Thanks so much, Will Selva. Go get yourself some breakfast as we hit up a little what happens first. We're going to talk about the order of who's going to get paid, when, why, and how much with these Cowboys. Dak Prescott and the Cowboys have exchanged in some contract proposals back and forth. We'll have Jane Slater with more on that. But I feel like he's at the top. He's the first guy. He's the priority as far as Dallas and extensions go. But what happens first? He gets a deal or Fourth of July fireworks go down here on the Hudson River? What do you think, Peter? I think he'll get a deal in the next few weeks. I do. I you think do? once we get into July and training camp, we get a little hair. I'm going to say deal. And I and that doesn't come from anyone on the Cowboys or Dax camp. I just feel like they're already negotiating, they're already talking, and they want to get this thing out of the way so they can focus on the season. The second you start training camp in Oxnard with all the good feelings and every question's about Dax's contract, it sets the season askew. So I'm going to say, I don't know, July 4th, if we're looking at it off the Hudson or the East River, wherever it is this year, I feel like Macy's changes it every season. Um, I'm going to say yes, contract, next few weeks before July 4th. It's almost like you have the inside scoop. Do you work for the Cowboys? No. Um, all right. Now, I'm going to say yes. I feel like he's the next stuff uh, for guys getting paid. When you have a quarterback that has done what he's done over the last few years, you try to get it done sooner or later. You don't want this contract to work its way into the season. I know Kyle Brandon says so many times on this show, you let him play out this year, and then you figure out how he starts this year before <laughs> you pay him. I say go ahead and pay him right now so you give him that comfort. Remember, Jerry Jones said when Dak Prescott and the Cowboys are struggling, Dak Prescott is my guy. And then after that, he went on a hot streak. So I'm going with, yes, pay him before July 4th. Both of them think he'll be paid in the next couple of weeks or at least before July 4th. What say you? We're going through the right through the fireworks and the back-to-back -back World War Champs T-shirts yeah, yeah, yeah. the Uncle Sam hats. And maybe we even go, okay into Labor Day beers and yes. barbecue. A long and, time from now. And a Halloween mallow cups. and all, No, um, <laughs> I've said from the get-go – Make him prove it a little more. He's not great. He's a good core. I don't mind starting the season. Dak's not going to hold out. Dak will show up. And if you start out and he's 3-1, and one, and wow, he's really good, screw it. Give him the world. But what if he starts 1-3 and three and he's not that great? I don't know. I don't think... Peter, the idea that they show up to Oxnard, there's a lot of questions. It's the Cowboys. There's oh, always right. a lot of questions. Yeah. I know. It, but I think they're built to handle that. I think, Kay, we're going right through those. He is going to show up, though. Hundreds of hours of live television. Mallow Cup has never been set on. No, I don't <laughs> know if it's been set on any show. First Mallow Cup reference. <laughs> the synapses fire, and they yeah, not yeah. peanut butter cup. Mallow it's Cup. all I thought about that entire spiel. <laughs> I kind of, me too. That's why I was just meandering. I don't <laughs> makes a good point, though. He's uh, going to show up. Yeah, yeah. That's we'll a see. company dude. Yeah. Let's uh, turn it to the Jets, though, because they are searching for a GM after firing Mike McCagnin last week. What happens first? The Jets hire a new GM or the Jets play a preseason game, Shrakes? Yeah, I honestly don't know. I actually want to go back to yesterday's show. I feel okay. like uh, 
the report was out there that the Jets were considering internally to contact me. Yeah. I dismissed it. I said, I've been that report before. The report could be absolutely 100% true. In fact, it might be 100% true, and I don't dis discard the, the report or whatever, but I haven't been reached out to yet, which kind of leads me to this next thing where I have no idea what's going on with the Jets, and it's odd that now we are a week out and a week removed from where we were a week ago, and there still seems to be, at least externally, no plan made. I haven't been contacted. Right. If I was contacted, I promise you, as viewers, I would tell you that yeah. I've been contacted. I haven't been. But the report might not have been, you know, in fact, I think the report is probably pretty accurate that they had discussed talking to people outside of the building, and it might not necessarily be these search firms. It might end up being guys in the media and picking the brains of people who might know other mm. agents, which is a very unorthodox way of going about this. Yeah. Whereas if I'm a Jets fan, is that unsettling? Sure, that's unsettling. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a plan in place right now for the Jets. Mm. I haven't been contacted, and that report that I dismissed, I shouldn't have dismissed it. It might very well be the case. I just mm. haven't been contacted yet. If you were, would you be interested? To help them with... Yeah. Uh, you know like what? Like a consulting thing. No, no. I don't, I don't think... And I... Again, it's so unorthodox to go at it that way, to right. be like... And I'm certainly not going to be considering like a running a search, but it is so unorthodox to that be your first primary thing that that's what caught me so off guard. Right. I wasn't disregarding the report that they were, but yeah, I mean, am I friends with Chris Johnson? I don't think sure. I'm friends, but we right. have a relationship, you know, right. obviously, but it hasn't gotten to that, and I certainly haven't been involved yet. Well, knowing you for a long time, and the fact that we talk every single morning before we get dressed about our professional lives and personal lives, I know that you haven't been contacted, because I would have heard this a long time ago, <laughs> um, but in regards to the Jets, I feel like they don't need a plan in place. They already made the moves they need to make. The free agents, the draft is here. If I'm a player in the locker room and I hear this report that they might not have a GM okay. ready to be hired, who cares? As long as I have my coaches in place and we have our plan in place to get through the summer, I think they'll be perfectly fine. Was it that bad between McCagan and Gase it had to be done right then if they didn't have anybody in line? That's like, the point. You, like, mm. what was the reason to rip the bandit without anyone in your back pocket? I'm not yeah. sure. Right. And then you just leave you exposed all summer. Or is it not as coveted of a spot as maybe. you maybe want it to be? I, I know, know. WFNs have been having some fun with they this. They sure story. have. Yeah, they talk about us and yesterday and Peter was the GM and I was the coach and you guys were owners and VPs <laughs> and all. They were casting everybody. Oh, what? Really? Yeah, I'm telling you. But honestly, that's what this <laughs> leads to. You start becoming the joke and and that's yeah. the danger when you don't make a move soon but it also the danger is using that sort of pressure and going in a direction that you aren't completely sold on because you want this to all be over yeah, I don't and, see that. and I would look what you said about the Cowboys about the show up to camp and Dax not signed and his questions the Cowboys are handled Jerry Jones has done that for 30 years I don't know if the Jets are ready to spend a whole summer let alone starting a preseason game you're like who is the GM and does Adam Gates have the same equity that or, or Christopher Johnson the same equity that Jason Garrett and Jerry no. Jones do where the fans are like all right but it'll take care of itself there's reason for yeah. concern if you're a Jets fan because it doesn't seem like there is a necessarily a plan in but place. There's no like interviews happening that we know of? I, like, currently, know? I have no idea. Or I have strange. nothing to report yeah, as far no. as interviews or even if guys have been contacted to set up interviews. But Trace, at this okay. point in the offseason, June, July, moving forward into August in the season, what is a GM's job right now? I mean, aside... Why do they need one right now? Let's go. They, what do that, they do? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. you, I, 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 get, I get that. You've got players coming to OTAs. You've got 90 guys in camp right part now. Of the if you don't know who's deciding whether that guy's going to be there, like, they're... It is a much more beneficial thing to have a GM in place mm -hmm. than to not, and have, or to have the image that Adam Gase is just the king and the emperor. Straight, and that's what I, that's what I would love to hear from you. Because as a player, once I got to this point in offseason, I thought that the work was done from the front office point. So you saying that it really opens up my mind to hearing more about that. Why would you say that you need a GM versus not need a GM at this point in the offseason? In New York, if you're a Jets fan, you have a guy who had a bad record with the Dolphins who now has more power than anybody. He's an interim GM in Adam Gase. Like, has he earned that? How much should I trust Adam Gase? I think that's sort of looming over yeah, Jets fans. And, I, and Gase is going to speak with, he's gonna speak with the media today, and it's going to be another roast. Oh, I can't Gase. wait for that. And it's, Can I mean, you do it on camera? Do you know that? I don't know. But they're, they're, I mean, that's, and that's the deal. Like, until you hire a GM, or at least put together a plan in place and share that with the with the world, you're going to leave yourself open to speculation. And yes, it was unorthodox to consider going to a person in the media, you know, that I haven't been contacted, which is unorthodox that I would even hear it that way. So the word unorthodox is not what you want to hear when you're talking about a team. We want orthodox. Yes, I would love orthodox right now. Let's do a speed round with Nate. You gave us your best hands wide receiver list of your top five. DeAndre Hopkins came in at number one. Yeah. She'd like to put it on his IG story. On Twitter also said, accurate, I am number one on that list. And he enters this year. He, let's see, he had 528 receptions. What? For his career? Unbelievable. Career. Meanwhile, the man who was number five on Nate's list, Antonio Brown, has 837 okay. career receptions. What happens?
comes first? Nuke gets to 600 catches or AB gets to 900 catches? I Ooh. saw something yesterday that seduced me. And I, I, I get a lot of Like, I, I'm the guy who, like, gets seduced by, like, a great preseason highlight and then drafts them in fantasy. I'll never forget Beanie Wells. Like, I took him so early. <laughs> I love Beanie. And a lot of people. Oh, my God, Ohio State guy. I was all in on Beanie. It was the yeah. Cardinals. He was great. But I saw this thing yesterday, and it was Carr out on the field with AB for the first time. And he threw this beautiful, perfect spiral deep ball uh -oh. perfectly in stride. And Carr even said, like, ooh, that felt good. Like, there was – and I was like, all right, AB's going to do it. AB's going to have a 200 catches and 2,000 yards. Um, I love DeAndre, but I based at least now because I'm just a little bit still floating from that. I think AB is going to work, which means I think he's going to get there first. One clip. That's all it takes, Nate. That's all it takes. All it takes Welcome to our show. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm going. Tweet I'm, it out. I'm going with D-Hop. I'm going with yeah. D-Hop. Yeah, I, I feel like they're just getting started. If they pick up where they left off, the Houston Texans just to start the season over. Woo. Yeah, I'm going to go with DeAndre Hopkins, too. He's 72 away while Antonio Brown is 63 away. So basically the question is, does DeAndre Hopkins get to 72 before A.B. gets to 63? Good match, Ray. I'm going to go with the chemistry yeah. uh, and the history and just knowing how much Deshaun Watson relies on DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know what that Oakland offense is going to look like. Because remember, they also added a stud running back they like, and they added Tyrell Williams. No is A.B. going to be the guy every single game? Might not be. I'm going to go with this guy. Mm, we know as far as the draft cities are concerned, what happens first is that it goes to the Las Vegas. What mm. happens after that, it goes to Cleveland, where you've had a cup of coffee. Oh, yeah, for sure. I was there for a few months, guys. Mm -hmm. We're talking about draft cities because the Spring League meeting going down in Florida and they've got the hosting rights for the 2021 NFL Draft and more uh, coming up. Bill Belichick was the Browns head coach uh, taking on, you guessed it, the Patriots. So what happens first? Cleveland hosts the draft or the Browns host a playoff game, <laughs> gentlemen? Nate, this is, this is your music. You guys know what I'm going to say. What? I got the Browns hosting the playoff game. They're going to win the AFC North. Hosting? I, 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 yeah, if they I, win the AFC North, they host. <laughs> Kyle, do you know what I'm saying right now? Sort of. Okay, they're going to win the <laughs> AFC North, and they're going to host a playoff game. Okay. Oh, boy. So, like, they're the best team within their division, and if they pick up where they left off, yes, they're going to host a playoff game. I'm all in on the Browns this year. You think I was seduced by A.B. because of one clip? You were seduced <laughs> by DeAndre because he retweeted your list that you did, okay? Uh, I'm going to say uh, that they have the draft first. Mm -hmm. I think the Steelers are going to be better than people think this year. I, I'm going to take the field. I'll take either the Ravens, Steelers, or Bengals over the Browns right now in May. How about Landon Collins coming on our show after this? So race? cool. He's joining us from Washington. We talked about the trade offer to, or the extension offer, sorry, to Dak. We'll get more on the Cowboys. Landon Collins is seated and ready to go, so we will talk to him about his departure from New York. Maybe a little OBJ. Okay. I also want to talk up to the uh, all-pro safety about that. Talk about it. Uh, softball.